What's up? It's Raymond Daniels, a.k.a. Ray the Great. I'm here with my Uncle Michael, the Blue Lake historian, and I'm also here with my dad, also known, y'all know him as Ray Daniels or the Coach Referee. And this and is... The G- 3G's Podcast. 3G's Podcast! Let's go, let's go, let's go! What's up? And, and the G stands for three generations. It also stands for three gentlemen. It also stands for three goats. We that it, in the the G stands for a whole lot right now. So let's get into it. So um, how y'all been doing? I just came back from Vegas. I've been doing pretty good. I, you know, I just got back from Vegas. Uncle Michael? I just came back from Alabama. What a difference. <laughs> and I just came from my room. <laughs> but look, so I wanted, to just, I wanted to get into this because, you know, we obviously do this show. This is my favorite thing to shoot because... By the way, this is like our dinner table conversations. And I wanted to do this because I just thought it was fun for my son and my uncle to us to just talk. Because, you know, a lot of black, young black men look for those mentors or those men in their life who just give them a male perspective. So we just pick subjects and we talk about it. So today we're going to talk about peer pressure. Raymond, do you feel peer pressure for anything at your school? And if it's not you, do you see peer pressure at your school? Yeah, I see peer pressure. Uh, what do you what are, what are your peer peers pressure pressing you to do? Getting good grades. That's the kind of That's peer pressure y'all peer got? Pressure. That's yeah. great peer pressure. That's great peer pressure. That's great peer pressure. Or no, turning in them assignments that don't do anything towards my grade, mom. Oh, you're talking about your, no, no, your mom can't be peer pressure. That's not your mom's not your peer. I know. Peer pressure comes from peers. You peers are your friends and your mom. people your age. Yeah, I don't get peer pressure. If anything, I'm doing it peer pressure. Oh, sh- okay. So what are you peer pressuring the kids to do? I don't know. I'm just saying that. I wouldn't get peer pressure. <laughs> okay. Anything. Uncle Michael, what kind of peer pressure things did you go through when you was a kid? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 give me when you're 15. Let's put yourself in Little Raymond's shoes. Let's not talk about eight years old. Let's not talk about 20 because, you know, you can go. You, you got a mm-hmm. photograph yeah. memory. Let's talk about when you were 15. What was the peer pressure that you were dealing with? When I was 15, my peer pressure was like to, to, to hang out, get high, you know, drop out of school. Mm. You know, that was a, you know, the kids, you know, guy like me that wanted to go to school, you know, but uh, the other people that seemed like didn't want to go to school, they was having fun and I wasn't. You, you know, know so I had a lot of peer I pressure. Remember, I did get peer pressured. What'd you get peer pressured to do? Not a lot, but I went to a party and I was offered a cigarette. I turned it down. Shut up. I swear. I was offered a cigarette by. Your mom is sitting right there like this. <laughs> You offer a cigarette for I real? I was offered a cigarette and I was offered a drink and I didn't decline. Are you fucking right, you better decline. Let's clap, let's clap for him. Hey, because you know, I would be I, the I daddy at the he, party. I don't think he declined, but go ahead. No, no he Mike, doesn't. See, why do you see, not? Why do you, okay, why tell us why you don't believe that. Why do you do that, Uncle Michael? Why can't, so why can't he be a good kid, Uncle Michael? I have seen kids. We're talking about him, though. We're not okay. talking about kids. I know when he around us, oh, y'all not around this house when y'all not here. Woo! You, man. He's talking about when my cousins are here and we curse. Baby. <laughs> and it's not even me. Cursing, it's my but, little cousins. Okay, okay, so let me tell you how I look at cursing. Number one, who said it was a bad word? So he, saying, someone said it was a bad word the, that was and it became a bad word. Okay, so if I say it around you, you wouldn't be mad? I told you you could curse around me, but you can't curse for no reason. Like, you can't just be like, I don't fucking know. It's like, that's... You just curse for the sake of cursing. If you're mad about something, or if you need to curse because that's how you want to express yourself about something or anything else, or even if it's expressing happiness, like hell yeah, I want to go. Like I don't care about that. Like I don't mind. Like to me, I'm different from Uncle Michael. Like Uncle Michael's like cursing. <laughs> yeah, cursing don't bother me because I never forget being at on PS18 playground, and the first time I realized, realized I can say, "What the fuck," and no one can stop me. <laughs> <laughs> While he was around, uh-huh. I what the fuck the whole day, Jordan. My whole life, I was cursing. Man, I don't know what the fuck we. I just, just felt good cursing. It was like, and then you did it, and you looking around, and you like, can't nobody you know, stop you can, me. You couldn't do that around my mother. Uh, I try to stop. It's yeah. uh, you know, I kind of do it a lot. I try to like. I, I was. I think, should, like seven. I, I think you shouldn't curse because you're gonna be in a situation where you have to speak. Like me, like you know, when I was in the church, I had to get up and do a little sermon. My biggest fear was that I might say, well, fuck this, you know, in front of the, the sermon, you know. So, I mean, I, 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 I wish my vocabulary was a lot better than what it is now. I, I try. I know? think I catch myself pretty well. Like, I might, but then I stop. But. Yeah. yeah I, when I, this is how I feel. I see people like Tony Robbins cursing, Gary Vee curses. Like, sometimes cursing can be a part of your brand. Like, some people brand is not cursing, but some people... 
bitch. Yeah, like some people brand is cursing. Like, like fuck out of here. Who gives a fuck? Like, I remember I saw the Tony Robbins documentary. Tony Robbins is probably the number one um, uh, motivational speaker in the world. I yes. love the guy. Me and too. he has a documentary did it. He's in there cursing. And I'm like, I think only black people in the hood frown upon cursing as being ghetto once they escape because they want to feel like they're affluent. But the reality is, is that rich people curse everybody curse it's just That's how true. you express your brand only reason why I know Tony Robbins is because of family guy oh you know Tony Robbins is because of family guy was, exactly, exactly, well, exactly I looked at it differently I mean you probably don't know this but it was a show in the 90s called Designing Woman and, I remember um, that show it had, I feel like that was Lisa Yoki's favorite Killer. show yeah. but the lady who was in charge of it I love the way she spoke and she can curse you out without using curse and I, I, I like that I yep. like you know you could tell a person off without saying you know Tell, you know, and I always loved the way she did that. You know, yeah. You know, so I mean, I wish I did not curse, and especially being in navy. But you help. do. I know. And there's a statement that says, and you just proved the point. There's a statement that says he curses like a sailor. You are a navy sailor. I understand it, but I wish I didn't curse. Now let me tell you something. When I was a grandma, my mother had a friend, and his name was Kiss My Shit. I mean, and I, I mean, his that was his name, Kiss My Shit. And, <laughs> uh, hold on, know, hold on. Like kiss my shit or was kiss it kiss my shit? That was his name. Now <laughs> no. you can bring my pair, you can bring my my niece, my uh, my brothers and sisters. They know his, that's his name. So I mean, <laughs> I couldn't wait to say his name, especially <laughs> in front of him. You know what I'm saying? He, he come, and, hey, kiss my shit. How you doing? Kiss my shit. My mother caught on. I got one of those kiss my shit. Pow. You know, I mean, you know. So I mean, I wish I didn't curse, but you know, we grew up in a cursive family. Well, yeah, yes. that's what I'm saying. So, Raymond, listen, yes. stay on brand. Whatever the f mommy curses, daddy curses. I'm not saying curse for the sake of cursing, but I'm saying we. I, I'm, I can't be a hypocrite parent. Like, I could tell you not to smoke at 14, 15, because I didn't smoke at 14, 15. I didn't smoke until I was 42 years old. Like, and it was with, no, I didn't smoke until I was 44 Khalifa. years old. And it was what? With Wiz Khalifa. Exactly. I smoked with Wiz Khalifa. But I'm saying that was my first time, and I made it count. You even know what it was. It, my first, most of my friends' first time smoking was right walking down, hitting, walking down Gabby Road from the bus. <laughs> Hold on, I'll tell you a story. Let me tell you a peer pressure story. So around 14, 15 is when everybody starts smoking weed. And Raymond, I ain't gonna lie to you, it was lame to me because I couldn't understand why would you want to smoke. That's what adults do. Like why would you and like why would you want to experience adult feelings when you're a kid? Like I just didn't understand it. So right. This is 93. No, no, this is like 95, 94, 95. And I remember walking home from school, never forget, my stupid ass friends, Reese, Cashmere, Boo Man, Tico, Tamashian, <laughs> all of us walking down the street, they, we start talking about smoking weed. So if somebody says, smoking weed is just smoking trees. So he was like, so these stupid motherfuckers grab some tree leaves off the tree. Grab some notebook paper out. We walking home from school, <laughs> roll it up in some notebook paper and say, this is just what weed is. Roll the shit up. Fucking out, Raymond, I'm in line. I'm like fourth in line. All I'm thinking to myself is, is please, Lorraine, my mom, your, your nana, please come down the hill. Please, because everybody knew I was scared of my mom. And if I could say, so I would kind of be like, no, y'all go first, because you know my mom might be coming down the hill and you know she'll beat me up, like, you know what I'm saying? But I really didn't want to smoke. By the way, I got to tell you something about Nana. I used to use Nana a lot. You should definitely. I know. I think kids I know need to use their parents. A lot of kids don't understand. The easiest way to get oh, out of I peer use, pressure oh, is to use your parents. But back to what I was saying. Oh, so yeah, I do. We, riding, we walking down the street. Reese jumps down the tree, grabs it. Reese does it first because Reese is the ballsy one. Cashman is the follower. He goes right after him. I think I'm high. You know, now I'm like, y'all stupid motherfuckers. This is trees from the, this is trees and notebook paper. I think I'm high. So they go. So, so they, Raymond, I'm next. Boo man goes. I'm like, I gotta get the fuck out of this. I gotta get the fuck out of this, please. Something happened, God, something happened. Boo man goes. Ah! Ah! He almost dies. Everybody gotta stop. And it was like, is he okay? He was like, help me, help me. What the hell happened? So then I go, nah, fuck that. I'm not doing, doing it. That. Not, not do, I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> so I never did it. But let me explain to you how important how you use your parents. Oh, this is I a do. good story. Because I, I feel like we give our strict parents a hard a hard um, time, but we shouldn't. You know Nanny uses you. What? She uses you. 
What you mean? Like she uses like you the way you use your parents, she uses you. Yeah, she always say she uses you a lot. She always say uh like if she wants my something son, done, my son yeah, said yeah, that this man, is okay. If so I had had a you nickel, got a problem with the gold. If with I had him. a nickel for every time I heard that's my son. We'd be rich. She told me that uh, already, she told me that's okay. my son. Right, I, said, I know that's your son. I mean, I know that. That's but, my son. Yeah, she used she used she that. Uses my, you yeah, a she, lot. She it's kind of annoying because it's like that's my dad. Yeah, I mean, that's my dad. What you say? I can say that's my dad. That's hilarious. I love that you said that. Like, that's my, what the fuck are you talking about? That's my dad. You want me to call him? We can have nah, confirm. But, but no, watch this. But let me tell you something. So we rock. So we so we so Tico and Tomashian. This is why your dad, and I never tell this publicly, your mom knows for sure. But I never tell this publicly because I don't want my friends being mad at me. But I got to tell the truth now because if they mad at me about some shit I did when I was 16, fuck them, they ain't my friends. But hey, boo, man. I will always use my mother as being a strict parent to get me out of shit. So I remember Tico was, Tico mom passed away and Tico got an inheritance from his mother's insurance so he bought a car. Now, mind you, I'm around with Tico every day. I'm in the motherfucking passenger seat or I'm in the back seat. If he going to the store, I'm getting in the car, no matter what. So I'm in Tico's car, and we riding. i never forget, we was riding down Gabby Road. We was playing Master P. One, two, niggas getting high in my Cadillac. Riding down the street, and I remember just them niggas being high, and I remember being sober. So I remember we was going real fast, Raymond, and I'm looking like, damn, we, got, we pull up on that car kind of fast. So I look at Cashman, I look at Tico, I'm like, Tico, Tico, and then boom, wreck. He had a car accident. Hit somebody head on. Hit somebody rear and somebody. So look, Raymond. Here's where your here's where your daddy is smart. This is where you gotta learn from your daddy. <laughs> I never tell this shit. So now Tico is like, fuck. I'm about to get in trouble. I'm gonna go to jail because I was smoking weed. So we like. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, why was your stupid ass smoking then, nigga? But I'm six, seven, seventeen. I'm just happy to be in somebody's car right now. You know how it is when you have, you know what it is when you're poor, seventeen year old. You get a ride, nigga. You want to keep your seat in that car. What, Aaron? You like turn the Aaron? Where you going? I'm going to church. I'm coming. Like I don't care. I'm just getting in the car. So anyway, we ride now and we and we hit this car head on. So I never forget. Cashmere license was suspended and Tico was high. So Tico goes, man, Ray, we need to say you was driving. Man, Raymond, I was like, hell yeah, I got you. Hell yeah. Say I was driving. But look, y'all know how my mom is. And I might get put out tonight. <laughs> so all I need y'all to do is, I just need someone, one of y'all to ask her. So I knew what she was going to say. <laughs> I knew what she was going to say. So he's like, oh, now you just call your mama, call her. So I call my mom, Ma, hey, Ma, what's up? Man, Ma Tico just had a car accident. And he want to say, I'm driving. What? What? I'm on my motherfucking way. <laughs> Lay on the ground. I'm like, Mom, already walking around, though. She's like, lay on the ground. Because she said, if you lay on the ground, we get a lawsuit. So I don't lay. I'm like, I can't lay on the ground. But Raymond, so so mom, if mom pulls up. So my mom comes out. She pulls up. She has lawyers coming, everything, just to sue Tico's brand insurance company. We didn't get no money anyway. But the point is, was that I always use my mother as an excuse. And I want to teach you that as a man. Sometimes when kids deal with peer pressure, sometimes peer pressure can... Peer pressure does not override fear. Peer pressure does not override fear. I don't give a fuck what they pressure you to do. Yeah, jail is at the end of that. But if you're afraid of that daddy ass whooping or that mama ass whooping, sometimes that's enough to get out of some peer pressure shit. Because I was always down. I'm not going to lie, son. I was always down. I was always down. That we, when we was go stealing, I'm stealing. When we go uh, robbing people, I'm going. When we going, I'm always going. But I was always the first one out. Cause I will always say, I guess that explains if Lorraine right. caught me, I'm, I'm motherfucking not dead, Aaron. She's gonna fuck me up. She had no qualms, Close to death. Close qualms to death. of fucking me up right. in public. So, if you ever deal with peer pressure, use mommy and or daddy, or use both, or use Uncle Michael. But you have to. If you don't want to do something, just use your family as your excuse. Man, oh, you know I my always, daddy is, man. Always, I might get put out yeah. the house if I smoke some weed with y'all. Oh, you scared of your daddy? He, uh, your daddy ain't as powerful as mine. Oh, yeah, I your daddy always, work at McDonald's. That's I why you could be afraid. My daddy don't work at McDonald's. I don't want to piss him off because he is powerful and he will whip my ass. Whoa. And okay. I can tell you from a man who went through all that is that uh, you look when you look back at when you look back at it, you realize that you know these motherfuckers ain't shit. You know what I mean? I was prayer pressure like girls and getting high and all that, and then I think about it. I was like, well, where they at now? Niggas dead or in jail. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, now I was like, you know, I have a cousin who, you know, I I mean, they, I wanted to be like them. I really wanted to be like them. You know, I'll tell you who it is afterwards, but, you know, I had a cousin and, you know, they was getting girls. I already know you talk about. Girls, I know you talking about. They had the good hair. Yeah, good hair and green eyes. The green eyes. Girls you know loved about. them. And I, I actually seen a girl that I was liking for years Wait, who? fight over his ass. And I was shocked. What the, you know, what the fuck are they fighting? Hit me, hit look at me, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But you know, life go by, life go by, and 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 I see that those cousins are not doing so well in life. And I said to myself, I, in a way, I would never say this out loud, but I said, look, I think about all the fucking times I get all these girls and shit, and I couldn't get shit, and now you ask me for five dollars. You know what I'm saying? You know, you don't graduate high school. You can't read them. Like, it's like the now name. you look back on it, you know, you're like, damn, I'm glad I didn't do that shit. You know, but then you got to go to therapy. Wonder why you haven't had sex for 100 years. But then again, <laughs> I'm trying to get over that shit. But, you know. <laughs> see, oh, see Raven. Look at Raven. Look, look, Raven. look at Raven's face. Raven. So I'm just trying to tell you some. See, as you see, I was raised in a house where Uncle Michael was talking like that. He didn't give me no solutions, though. He always blamed the people. I want to <laughs> give you the solutions. That's Just, true. Listen, do not, and let me tell you another thing. Don't have the focus to have sex. Don't have the peer pressure to focus on girls. Don't do none of that. Focus on you and That's your true. business and your business only. And I know that feels as hard as a 15-year-old kid to focus on that. But what I will tell you is, is that what they don't tell you, what they don't tell kids is that you're a child for 17 years and you're an adult a whole lot longer than that. And five of the years you were a child, you don't even really remember it because that was zero to five. So you probably got like maybe 10 years of being a child, right? And once you get once you get to that position where you are, you know, you with me? Yeah. I okay. Just, just making sure because you, you know, you start talking to kids, they just start yawning and shit, they check out. I was trying to think, do I remember my fifth birthday? No, no, huh? I was trying to think, do I remember my fifth birthday? You probably don't. You don't remember your first birthday. You cried the whole time. I got pictures the whole time. That's, crazy. That's another story, though. But my point is. You got the crown. But. <laughs> you do got a crown. You still got a crown for real. It has um, the blue one that has one on it. It's somewhere in that closet. For real. Yeah. Oh, we gotta get that. That's dope. And I still got my shoes from a baby. For real. Some old navy ones. They was fat. Like Some fat shoes. Like big on your feet. Like fat on your feet. And like they're like a circle. Oh, okay, okay, got you, got you. But yeah, I, I just want to tell you that, man. Like, don't buy into peer pressure. Don't let people press you into doing things that you don't want to do. And make sure that you you set your own goals because when you become an adult, none of that shit matters. Like, peer pressure. Yeah, a, you, you get peer pressure as an adult, but it doesn't matter the way it does when you're a kid. Stop focusing on. Yeah. What, what you saying? You are trying to fit in? Yeah, don't worry you know, about fitting. I mean, in. I mean, you're trying to fit in. You know, I mean that when you when you're 15, you want to be liked. You know, and I, now I realize what's the importance of wanting to be like. I don't you know care. What I'm saying, I mean, you don't care about being liked. You know, I mean, sh not yes, real. Do. Not really. Raymond, I mean, Uncle Michael, how you gonna tell like him he care? How you gonna you do that to him? Uncle Michael, he, he, he was raised by his dad and his assumed, mom. He's Uncle confident. Michael, we are not the same. I, you know, <laughs> I know we are not the same, but, but I worry about him. Why? Like, because like, when I see teenagers do stupid shit, he's gonna get a lecture about it. I'm gonna tell him about it. You know. When so I what's see, some stupid shit you see teenagers do that you want him doing? Okay, I some kids about a year ago. They was driving a car, and they crashed and killed all four people in Georgia. You said that the driver didn't die, though. And yeah, the driver didn't die. It was four people. And and I, a lot. I'm like, Ray, you got to make decisions because that right, that one decision caused people their lives. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, and the fact that you want to fit in. I got my knee. I got. I can show you a scar in my in my leg that I was trying to impress girls, and I was kicking open the door thinking I was Bruce Lee, and I wound up kicked through a window. <laughs> And almost took my damn leg off. Trying to and show off for girls. Trying to show off. So I went, I, I mean, the school said, bring your mother to school. And I said, I did. Now, what I should have did was oh told my mother that my what? leg was, my leg you was kicked, half Wait, wait, off. wait. You kicked in a window? Yeah, man. I was thinking I was wait, Bruce Lee. girls are impressed you know, by you kicking in the door. Man, I was just trying. The girls were looking at me. <laughs> so I'm running, to the, the, I'm running towards the, the, the thing. I kicked. I was aiming for the third one, but I kicked through the second one. And then, you know, so they said, bring him over to school. I said, oh, shit. I mean, ass whooping. Which I did. But what I didn't tell my mother was my fucking leg was is fucking bleeding. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I hid it for almost three weeks. What? To a point where yeah, Dane Green started kicking. Yes. He got another whooping. And what I should have did, I should have got a stained whooping twice. 
But then she's like, ah! We saw that, and we they took me <coughs> to the hospital, and the doctor said, if you'd have waited two more days, your leg would have been am amputated. I'll show you how to scar. You know what I'm saying? You know, and my mother beat my ass again. <laughs> so that was a two for one. I should have got an ass whipping for both of them at one time. You know what I'm saying? But you should have told the truth. I should have told the truth. You, you know? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, prayer pressure was... Hold on, hold on, hold on, that's you. Have you ever got your ass whipped at school? Well, I did... In front, of your, time, in front of your yeah. peers. But my, my sisters and brothers, they were specialized in get your ass whooped in school. So so you actually got, like, hold on, you, babe, you say you got your ass whooped in school. All right. Wait, I know I for a fact I, like I have. I know I've never I know hit when your you school. Did. I've never hit your school. I know when you did. When? When it was like first grade, right? And first, Raymond, <laughs> Prince Charles. Wait, Daniels, why you were with me at school? Raymond, listen, I got a bad grade. Miss Gellerstein. Told my mother that I was being bad in class, and I don't. And here's and your, the part and your that. Like, oh, let me say something. Let me say something. I gotta say something to a white teachers in America. I want to talk to the white teachers in America. I'm talking teachers in America. You can't beat kids no more. Y'all, no, no. This is a PSA. This is a PSA with a white teacher in America. You can't beat kids no more. When that white teacher was telling my mother all the shit I was doing, and my mother was like, "He's doing what?" And she was looking at me. All I was thinking was, "Bitch, you trying to get me killed?" <laughs> Bitch, why you gotta tell all that? You trying to get? My, and my mom was like, "He did what?" Tell her the one thing I did to get her. In. God, just tell her one. Man, Raymond, from the they do give a whole rundown like out your behavior school, the last three years. She held my hand the whole way home Bam. from PSAT to our fucking my bedroom on the fourth floor, at 328 East 145th Street. She whipped my ass the whole way, and I don't think that teacher knew what the fuck they they knew what they was doing. <laughs> yeah. Like you got to shut. Sometimes when y'all teachers be telling these black parents. What the students are acting up, you are setting them a death wish, my nigga. Like the parents are gonna act cool in front of you, like, oh, thank you, because what you, because the parents, you know, black mamas, they cold switch. Uh -huh. You don't know that, Raymond. See, your mom don't do that, cause your mom talks proper. But my mom would talk like motherfucking beat your motherfucking ass, nigga, at home. But when she get around my teacher, she was like, "How are you? <laughs> She's doing what? Okay, he's not doing what? Hmm." What do you got anything nice she, to say? No, no, no. She didn't say that. that, that she just thing. stared at me. I remember thinking like, you know what I'm this about? bitch trying to get me my you know fucking you. I'm six, my nigga. I am six years old. I don't know shit, my nigga. Why are you telling me like that? That's a good entertainment seeing a the kid they get their ass whooped in school. Oh, yeah, it is. That's some <laughs> good yes, entertainment. It is. You like, but you don't, you don't let it go. Yes, but it is. You repair, but you don't, they don't let it go forever, though. The kids talk about it forever. Man, they in the, they in the 12th grade tomorrow. You don't remember little Raymond? Raymond got his ass whipped in third grade. His mama came. They don't let it go. That's why I be trying to tell these black parents, we got to stop whipping our kids at in front, well, actually, I'm not gonna say that. Whip their ass cops. in front of school because my mom whipped my ass is why I never got no more trouble. They obligated to call the cops. Huh? They obligated to call the cops. Who is? The, the student, uh, the school system. Nigga, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, Rambo, watch this. Let me ask you a question. Ask him if he, when he was 10 years old, if he would have called the cops on grandma. <laughs> what would have happened? <laughs> no, ask him. She would have killed me. But she gave me, my mother, my mother, when I was, uh, my mother gave me a, the only two black guys I got in my life I got from my mother. Whoa! What? The? <laughs> Hold up! Wait! <laughs> He's dying over here. <laughs> only two, the only two black eyes I got in my life. Black eyes? Black fucking eyes. <laughs> like Grandma hit you with a her face. Well, in your yeah, face? yeah. Well, well. This one time she brought a oh, nice he did coat. me right. A real nice coat. And she told me, "Don't take the fucking coat off." Oh, I, I said, am. "No problem." I took the coat off to play Ring and Leave Y'all don't know about that uh, game. Ring and Leave One, Two, Three. Somebody stole the coat. Oh, she whooped my ass, and then I turn around from my back to my front. Boom! All this swole up. And then you know, but really, if I'd went to school, she would have called. They would call the cops. She kept me home for like about a week because she knew that she was in trouble. That was. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I would yeah, yeah, yeah. But what? Yeah, and she gave it to me another one. You know, uh, got caught playing hooky. You know, I mean, me and Larry got caught playing hooky, and we got caught by the cops. You know, the truant officer, man, you know. And then the good thing, the thing about it is we lied about in 1979 because your mother was pregnant with you. And we told the uh, the lawyer, the, the, the guy that, you know, my mother is with my sister because she's getting married. You know, your, your, your mother had a shotgun wedding. That's, that's, Whoa. But that's another story. But anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, well, anyway, they <laughs> tried to call that. mommy and that. she didn't answer the phone. And then, but the letter came. And I should have got the fucking letter. 
And like me house and Larry, party? Yeah, me and Larry got our ass whooped. And she, she gave me another black eye. You know, my mother was abusive. <laughs> God damn. She was abusive. <laughs> got to you know tell the saying? truth. The truth is, you know, I mean... I, I always said if I had kids, I would never do that. I would never, you know, it was like, the, the curse out. It's crazy. So, so I got to ask you a question now. Here goes some questions for you, son. What scares you about, what, what are you afraid of doing that will bother your parents? Like, give me some things that you're like, if I do, if I do this, I know I'm going to have my mom mouth. If I do this, I'm going to have my dad mouth. Which one is it? Well, you, I don't hear your mouth a lot because you, you understand that mom be overreacting sometimes. Yes. Mom, I'm sorry. You be kind of dramatic. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> when I had one missing assignment, texting the whole group chat, Raymond has a missing assignment. That's like, just get it done. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to give her that because she does tell me to get it done and I just don't do it. But that, you understand. I'm on your mom's side. Oh, here we go. And then, I'm on your mom's but side. with you, there's only there's two things that I know I should never do that's going to make you really mad. And it's smoke and touch his guns. And you remember he told me, we were, I was like 10 years old. He was like, um, if I got a gun, would you, you think it's okay if I have a gun? He was like, yeah. He, talking to me, he was like, yeah. And I, he said, if you ever touch his gun, I'm going to beat the fuck out you. I mean, the flip, <laughs> no, you say it. beat okay. the fuck out you, pretty much. <laughs> He's like, if you ever touch this, I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat you, like, really bad. And I've never touched his gun, never since. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't, since. you can't never smoke. Okay, so here's what, here's, uh, let's lay it down now. You can't smoke, you can't drink. Oh yeah, and, drinking. And 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 the reason why is because right now while your young mind is shaping, I don't want bad habits shaping your young mind. I don't want you taking on habits that I think are gonna hurt you because I will tell you this, son. Your dad has your dad does smoke weed now from time to time. Um and your dad does take edibles, but by the time I start taking it, He's I was forty two or forty four, forty two on edibles and forty four on weed, but my habits are already shaped. So I don't have to worry too much about certain parts of my life being out of whack because I'm going to wake up in the morning and work. I already developed my good habits. And what I'm trying to say to you is that all I'm even with this podcast, I'm, this is me helping you develop good habits and talking to speaking. I just want you to develop good habits and smoking weed and and drinking and having unprotected sex are the worst three things that you can do as a young man. And the reason why is because they all feel good. They all have a good feeling at the end, but they all cost you so much more in the end that by the time you get it, you need to be completely up. So if you look at all my friends, like, and, the, and the, here's another thing I want to say. My son sees, by the way, me and my friends, my friends are broke, but we still friends. Like, you know that. Like, they, my, my friends that I grew up with, we, they broke, but they still friends. We still friends. And I be wanting my son to see that the reason why they probably fucked, well, that most of them are fucked up is because they had kids and they had bad habits. And when you got kids and bad habits, that is a fucking combination for failure for any human alive. And you can't fail. I'm, I'm, I was never a follower, but peer pressure, I had peer pressure in his house. About what? About yeah, you had peer pressure in your 50s. Somebody offered me some fucking edibles. I did. Don't say somebody. And I swear to God, I pray to God I would never do this shit. No, the, I did the first one, remember you gave me one. I was like, damn, this make you mellow out. I had two. My God, I was praying, Lord, let me get over this. You know what I'm saying? I kept on laughing. Oh, what you I, I was like, I was saying, God, please, I'm never doing this shit again. You know, you know. And that's, the, the last time I smoked marijuana, I was 14. You know, and my cousin Poppy gave me some marijuana, and I tried to be cool. And then you know, the damn thing, shit almost had me flying. I thought I was flying. And my tongue kept on moving. Why my tongue moving? Yeah, and yeah, tongue yeah, kept yeah, on moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know? So I mean, I said I'm never, gonna, I'm never gonna be that. That's why I became an introvert. He's not an introvert. He's an extrovert. I'm, 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 I'm an introvert. Well, He's an introverted you, you, extrovert. You have, and before I understand, you have to be around people sometimes, you know. And I don't. To be honest with you, I don't want to be around nobody. I understand. And I that. tell myself to go out more, but I like being by myself, you know. So you know. I'm not a I'm, 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 I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert because I have no choice, and that's how I win in life. You're an introverted extrovert. I'm an introverted extrovert, yep. Because I, I ain't going to lie, son. I don't like going outside. I don't like being around people. And the people that I am around are my people. Like, they're, they're my guys. Like, we all oh, think dog. like we feel it. They're my, they're my dogs right there. So even if they wasn't here <laughs> filming, we would still be kicking it at the office. So that's why I do it. But I'm an introvert. But I will tell you this. You got to go outside. You got to go outside, and you got to try. 
And that's true. You got to. And Uncle Michael does it. I, I, that's true because I, I was like that when I was when I was a kid. You know, I, I didn't I couldn't know I didn't know how to talk to anybody. I didn't know how to speak to people. You know what I'm saying? Until I really got about thirty years old, and I, I, I took a Janet Jackson. She was like that. She's very shy, and then she learned a method how to deal I with know. it. And I, my method is I'm an actor portraying me. So I'm Michael Augustine portraying Michael Augustine. That's how I get away from, you know, you know, not trying, not, you know, because I know if they look at me, they look at this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But that, no, they're looking at Michael Augustine, the actor. So even when I'm when I'm with FEMA, I'm, I'm an actor. You know, hey, you know, you know and, I, and I'm thinking like I'm on stage. You know, that's how I get away. That's crazy that you said. You know, that's what I do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Ask mommy. I always tell her, I'm like, commit to the character. Don't I always tell yeah. you that? I'm always like, commit to the character. Like, here's what, that, I, that's a good point. So I want to say, I want to tell you something, son. What Uncle Michael was saying is, here's the best part about life that I want you to know. You can take a piece of paper out and you can write down the new Raymond Prince Charles Daniels. And you can say, this is how he dresses. This is how we, this is how he dresses. This is how he, he talks. This is how people see him. This is how people perceive him. And this is what he is. And you can become that person. But you got to commit to the character. Yeah. You don't like that idea? Oh no, I understand. I just yeah. hit it wrong. But don't blow your don't blow, blow, blow don't blow your lips. Respond. You gotta commit to the character. Okay. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. I understand. It's just important. Cause I, I tell people I'm an actor playing myself. Like I'm an actor playing myself. Like I'm always ready because I'm always I'm just acting. The only time I'm myself is when I'm home with y'all. That's the only time I'm really myself. When I'm in the streets, I have to be the character. Yeah. Meaning like as APM Jordan, as much as y'all know me, have y'all ever seen me really just go crazy and lose my mind and like going off on people? No. That's not the character I play. Now the the, the only time I ever seen you go off his own, though. Really? At a you, party one time. You just gave him a. He did something to piss you off, and you was like, "Remy got through. That was the only time I ever seen. Yeah, you, you just like, gave him some ammo right now. He feels so good about himself. He like, <laughs> I'm the only reason why your dad goes off. Good to know, Dad. Even Aaron said, you only go off on me. <laughs> He's the game a whole lot. I, I, I went right. And, you know, I was thinking about something, Ray, uh, you, and I was wondering why, you know, I think about my other nieces and nephews, and I'm like, I am not as close to them as I am to you. And I realized the reason why, because you let me in this guy's life, in these people's life. And they really don't do that. And remember, and me and you had a phone out about something. He got his first haircut. Mm -hmm. And never forget, you said you were supposed to be there. And mm -hmm. I was mad because I, I wanted to be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know? And I like the fact that you let me in his life. You know, I want him to know Uncle Michael. He's going to tell his kids about Uncle Michael. You know, where other people are like, oh, fuck is Uncle Michael. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> you, you know what I like did, that. ladies and gentlemen? I gave my nephew, Raymond, some baseball cards, about 55 years old. You know, I'm hoping he don't sell it. He may when he get you really figure out it had some value? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, because, you know, I mean, I want to pass my legacy. By the way, that's now. fucked up, though. I want to pass my legacy. Because you told me now. my whole life they was coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, because. He really did. Now he's like, it's well, you funny. don't need it no more. You got money, nigga. I'm going to give it to me. Yeah, I, 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 I want the cards. And I, I don't want... even like baseball. Man, I don't even now, but I mean, these baseball cards bring back so much memories. No, I like money. You know, I like money. So, Raymond, what kind of peer pressure do you go through at school? Like, tell me the peer pressure. And by the way, another thing about you that I didn't experience is that you go to a high school with. A lot of white people. Yeah, I went to Banneker. We was niggered out. Was That's good in a sense. Nigger central. That's good. <laughs> That's good in a sense because with white people, like when, for me, I always thought white people was Peter and Bobby Brady. You know what I'm saying? I always thought they was like Marsha and Jan. I always thought they was perfect. You know, and, and, when, and I had my first white friend when I was 17, and he had his first black friend, and we didn't really. He thought I was this thug, you know, out there doing crazy shit. And I remember he said, "Yo, man, you a guy." And I said, yo, I don't get hot. And he said, well, shit, you black, you don't get hot? No, I don't get hot. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, damn, you white? And you ain't like Peter Brady. I never saw Peter and Bobby get hot. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm thinking, shit, you know, something ain't right. In fact, he cut me off. I was working for J.C. Penney. Me and him met each other at J.C. Penney. And he cut me off because he told his friends, the other black friends, that he's not black enough. And what? Like, yeah, yeah. I a white man it. told? A white man, yeah. And, and then the other friends was like, <laughs> I never forget. They took... They said that I'm the, I'm the type of nigga that would drive the price of pussy up. You know? And I'm like, you know? <laughs> you know? Because I, I mean, I was, I was very respectful. I was very respectful. That was great. They paid me $40 an, $4 an hour. Man, I could, I, man when that man said, we're going to give you $40, $4 an hour, 
He could have said a million. I was like, Get I just knew. I was like the Jeffersons. But I'm moving on up. You know? But, I, you know, I, that's my first time. <laughs> you see Uncle Michael? I, you know, 1984, very good year. So, so, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, so son, so, son, do you ever feel pressure? And I'm being honest right now. Do you ever feel pressure to be black at your school? And do you even know what that feels like? Yeah, what is black? The, the norms see, that, see, like, see, white people haven't really been no, around no, black but, people. But, but here's the thing, though. I'm only, I'm, let, me, let me just stop you. I'm only asking for a question because you went to middle school and in in, in elementary school in the 70s. That's different. He's going to school in the 2020s. Like, that's 50 years later. Yeah. Like, what? The, like I'm just curious. Like, what is it that... Okay, but, okay, so when you say black, what do you mean by black? Like, I don't know what it means. Like, and, 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 and the way I went to high school, you had to... Well, I mean, everybody was black, so you had no pressure to be black. But when you go out to the real world, like Uncle Michael said, you feel pressure to be a black man. And I'm just wondering, like, does your generation... Because your generation is way more open-minded to the world. Like they're not as like like they like where when you was raised in the back in the sixties or the seventies and the eighties or whatever it was, the only thing that could really influence your kids outside of their peer circle was TV and radio and music, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So like but you had to have access to that. Now, so the first time we saw black people living good was the Cosby show. Yep. First time we ever saw that in black America were like I didn't believe it at first. I, it was almost like a myth to us, yeah, right? Yeah. Like here's these black people doing good. And it almost becomes like, well, that's never going to be my life, right. right? But then you realize, I think some people look at me and be like, damn, this is the ghetto Cosby show, right? Like, look at, like, got the grandfather in the house, the kids in the house, the dog. <laughs> no, you know no, I say we the black uh, Beverly Hillbillies. No, 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 we ain't no damn Beverly Hillbilly. He don't know that. Raymond don't know what that is. Raymond, don't pay attention to him. <laughs> okay. I just heard Hillbilly. <laughs> no, no, but what I'm saying is, is that, what I'm saying is, is that, so at your school, there's no pressure to be black. No. Oh, that's good. No that's pressure. Good. What kind of pressures do you have? Do you have to dress nice, like at a at a, at a school full of white people? Like at black schools, Raymond. Let me tell you something. You gotta dress nice. You better dress nice. Yeah. Because if you don't dress, how you dress can determine how popular you are. Yeah. Regard if you don't even open your mouth. If you dress the right way in black schools, that gets you by. In your school, yeah. does it matter how you dress? No. Everything I, I, that you see me wear around the house is what I wear at school. No, I, I wear sweatsuits. I, I observe you. You know, when I have picked you up, I observe you. I really do. I, I watch the way you walk out to school. I watch the way the other students are, and I'm thinking to myself, these motherfuckers. But I, I, I observe you, and, you know, I'm like, damn, Ray, you don't walk with your head down. When I was growing up, I kind of walked with my head down. And, and, you know, I kind of felt like everybody in this world was better than me. Mm -hmm, me too. You know what I'm and by the way, he taught me that, and then I realized that I, that that's not true, and that's why I'm doing everything in my power to teach you that you can fly. But I just need Uncle Michael to pull the string down a little, so yeah. you don't think. It's just, I just need somebody around you, cause me and your mom is like, know, you want to be an astronaut? Let's go. Uncle I'm Michael's like astronaut. <laughs> yeah, I'm driving him home. I said, Ray, your birthday's coming up. Oh, uh, September, when, uh, November. I want a Tesla. Tesla. If he I fucking get a goddamn all. bus pass, I'm happy. You know, but, but hey, see, but see what I'm saying. Here's the thing: we have to stop doing that. The the rest of the point of this show, the point of this show is, is that we make people, we work hard to give our kids a better life, and then we want them to feel bad for it. Like we kill ourselves to give our kids access, then That's we true. then we're mad that they have the access. But you got to keep them grounded. You, but yeah, but my thing is, I don't believe you're supposed to keep your kid grounded. All right, so you. I don't think Tiger Woods' father kept him grounded. Well, I don't think that plate. the Serena, the Williams sister kept them grounded. You, so you got like 50, sec, 50, 50 cents son who said, damn, I make $6,000 a month. That yeah. shit ain't enough. But see what I'm saying? But, hit, but, 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 Uncle Michael, but Uncle Michael, you talking, you got to stop doing that. You got to stop picking the, the subjects that fit your argument. The reality is this, is that that's their situation. What I'm saying to you is this is our situation. I just want you to be a good person and I want you to go out there and get it for yourself and I want you to not I want you to feel like the world is yours because it is. That's, Did you feel that's like the, the world was yours? No, hell no. Look how you, look how you ended up. Yeah, I never. I'm not I never saying it like that. Was, I'm not being disrespectful because yeah, you know you're my mine. uncle, but I'm just you saying. Know? I didn't think that I started thinking the world could be mine and it eventually became mine. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, uh, you know, he had you. You know what I'm saying? And I always wonder, I, you know, Ray, sometimes I look at you and I wonder, what's, what's this, what is his success? And how the fuck he did it and I didn't? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, one thing I realized is that Ray, Ray would have more confidence than, he, than, than I had. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he had to believe in himself. You know what I'm saying? And my and thing is, okay, so let me ask you this. I have a video. I want to talk about this. Would you rather him be narcissistic or humble? 
Me personally, I would rather him be humble. Why? Wait, what's the? What's I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna educate I, you. Because I, I, mean, I believe, I believe you give, you get back what you give. You know what I'm saying? And I, in my life, you know, I, that's what, it's always been. If I do the right thing, I always got back. You know what I'm saying? You know, I probably didn't get a lot of, sh- a lot of, you know, but I already got back. So narcissistic, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't know. I, I had to watch your ass. But then again, narcissistic people, they, they make it. They really do make it. Do you, you think know? Obama was a narcissist? No, but Trump was. Trump is. Damn. I think Obama's a narcissist. I think he kept on the down low. I, no, he no, probably I, did. He probably did. That's what Because he believed he wait, could be a person. what is a narcissist? A narcissist. Oh, my God. So that's what a narcissist is. Narcissistic is somebody that thinks that they're the shit. No. A narcissist is someone who thinks highly of themselves. Has I'm excessive. I'm a narcissist. Huh? I'm going to be a narcissist. Hold like on. Hold on. What did he say? Hold up. What did like son say? I'm, hold on. What'd you say, son? Exactly. <laughs> I would rather be a narcissist if that means, wait. Okay, so Raymond, means- okay, I like this. This is great. Okay, Raymond, in life, I'm, I'm going to read these two these two definitions to you. I'm going to do this with you right now because we did this on my show and it, it got a whole lot of stuff. Okay, here's the definition of humble, okay? Humble is having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance and of low social, administrative, or political rank, Right? That's humble. Here's narcissist. Mind you, here's the best part about this. He doesn't even know that, that one, the perception of one in the outside world, which is great. So here's narcissist. Uh, definition, narcissist personality disorder involves, first of all, they call it a disorder. Crazy. They don't call it being humble disorder, which it should be, but that's another story. Narcissist personality disorder is, involves a pattern of self-centered, arrogant thinking and behavior, a lack of empathy and consideration for other people and an excessive need for admiration. Others often describe people with MPD as cocky, manipulative, selfish, patronizing, and demanding. That sounds like me. That sounds like every great man that ever lived. And if I'm being honest with you, that's what I'm asking you. And what I believe, Uncle Michael, is I believe that all success, I believe Martin Luther King was a narcissist. I think it's narcissistic behavior to believe that I have a message that is so important that the world needs to hear it. Maybe That's doesn't. narcissistic behavior by Maybe itself. Maybe the word narcissistic um, has a negative you, connotation. You, but the truth about him is that he was like, you know, it, you have to, it's a, that's the difference between teaching and being a historian. You got to go deep. You know, he had, he was depressed a lot. You know, I mean, he, he went through a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Just to be, just to do what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, especially a week before he died, it was a whole bunch of shit going on in Memphis. And, you know, they blamed it on him, but it wasn't him. And then he was probably, he, said he was more depressed than ever. The point is, he, he he got up when it was time to get up. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's what I do. When it's time to get up, I'm gonna get up. Well, I'm trying to maybe, tell you this, maybe son. Maybe a narcissist has a negative son. connotation. Huh? Maybe narcissist has a negative connotation. No, it does. We it is call it a winner. It okay. <laughs> that's why that's my son. <laughs> that's why that's my son. Because let me tell you something about this world, dog. I watch these animal pages right on Instagram. I love them. Me too. Because you watch them too? Mm-hmm. They might know that. That's good. But what what you understand about the animal kingdom is is that there's an order there and it and it they're not like there are no protesters out there asking the lions to treat the hyenas as equals. No, we kings and they and we move like kings and they don't and that's why we fucked them up when they come around us, right? Cuz they are battling. For, no, hear me out, Michael. Right, they are right. battling for food and battling for 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 to survive at the end of the day. And what I'm telling you is this, is that when you see those videos, you start understanding that it's not about how we feel. See, the only difference between humans and animals is that humans can remember and humans can also reason, right? Like animals don't have memory, so they can't reason. So humans tend to hold on to shit. So Uncle Michael might be, ho- there might be somebody that watches this and feels like that kid's not going to be shit. He thinks he wants to be a narcissist, but that's based on their perception. Let me tell you something. Every great family, they're told, you are taught you are great. The fuck the part about our family, if I'm being honest with you, is we come from a narcissistic family. The problem is, is that they treat, they thought they was better than everybody else. Now, I don't think that I'm better than nobody, but I do believe that I can do more than most men can do, and that's why I do it. So if somebody says, and I have been humble a large part of my life, and I've seen the narcissist come run over and win every time. And the only way you, the only way you, a narcissist is not a bad thing is if you could back that shit up. Nigga, Kobe Bryant was a narcissist. He thought he was great. And guess what? He backed it up. Michael Jordan did too. He backed it up. LeBron, he backed it up. It's if, it's if you're a narcissist with no work ethic. 
that's when you that's when you like ain't shit. But if you're a narcissist is out there every day giving it the best you got and be and treating people good, because even then you might feel like I could treat people better than most people could treat them. Well, I could I think people need to be treated better. So my thing to you is don't let nobody tell you being a narcissist is a bad is a bad thing because that is not who you are. That just means that's how they see you. Narcissist yeah. is basically saying you think you all that. Yes, I do. I'd rather be yes, a team I player. do. No team player. I'd rather be a. I'd rather, I'd rather. I want. I'd rather be a team. I think the reason why black people the way we are is because we're not. We don't. We're not team players. You know but we're not taught to be. I know. I mean, we're not taught to be. But we're not. We're not. We're not taught to love each yeah. other. And another yeah. thing, Michael. We also here's a, here's another problem with black people. We hate people that's not like us. I mean, we that, hate people that's not like us. Like we hate you if you're not like us. Like, oh, you don't feel like I feel. Fuck you. Like, like. A black, a room full of black Democrats will hate the one back apart. How you vote that Republican? No, no. I would love to meet. I would love, besides you, I would love to meet a, a Republican wow. that that okay. you know. I, w I really would like to speak for a, Rep a black Republican. I, I mean, just man to man. I want to, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> tell me why you like Trump, I, 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 Republican Party. Tell me what's so good about the Republican Party. You know what I'm saying? I really want to sit down with a black Republican. And I'm, we, I'm, I'm, let's have dialogue. Can I tell? Can yeah. I tell you something? I'll tell you something. He ain't gonna believe me. I'd much rather deal with the redneck Republican who tells me who they are than <laughs> see Uncle Michael. You gotta let me get my point out. We love that Mike. I would rather deal with the red. This is the problem. See when he talks, I let him get out. When I okay. talk, fuck that. <laughs> I don't say fuck that, okay, right? Go ahead, go ahead, Daddy's go ahead, go ahead. open minded. That's why Daddy is successful. Cause I don't, I don't. So assume you ever be able to deal with the redneck Republican? I rather deal. I rather deal with a redneck Republican that tells me what it is than to deal with a fake liberal Democrat that thinks because they voted for Obama that they don't have racism in them. Well, and to, I, him, hit me out. Hit me out. Let me tell you why. Because I like. Because in order to be successful, you have to accept that it is what it is. And then you can make changes. It's okay to be a dreamer, but don't be a dreamer without accepting the terms of the, the, the room that you're walking into. And to me, that's what I want you to understand. Listen, I don't care how, like, these Republican, these, these liberal Democrats that feel like they voted for Obama but won't let a black man date their daughter, won't let a black man run their company, won't give a black man any real power, but will vote for Obama. Right. Compared to a redneck that's like, hey, man, I like Georgia the way it is. And I can respect that because you telling me where you stand and you and I know what I'm up against compared to making me think you're my friend the entire time. Hopefully me knowing behind closed doors, you like, well, I mean, Ray is my friend, but he's going to get to this point because this point is for us up here. And that happens in this world. And see, the problem, uh, Uncle Michael bought the dream and I so and I'm selling it right now. And that's the difference between him and I. You know what? He that's bought true. it. I, I'm selling that's it. That's true in a sense. I believe that. You you know, if if you do the right thing, you know you get the right results. I still do believe that. You know, but I realize a lot of that is just bull. And let me because, tell you something: you the know, world is going to give you the world. You, yeah, yeah. The yeah. world is going to give you what you demand from it. Well, I, you know, if I, you I, tell I, the I world, y'all going to treat me like this, or I'm not coming, they will treat you like that. And yeah. if they don't treat you like that regardless, then you need to look in the mirror and figure out what you're doing wrong. Because why did not treat me like the king that I think I am? Because you ain't acting like a king, nigga. <laughs> It's crazy. You ain't acting like a you ain't, ain't acting no like a prince. You acting like a little girl, and then you wonder. And not saying the derogatory little girl. Speaking about a man, because I have a little girl. I love my daughter. But you're acting not like a man. And the far, and the farthest thing from a grown man is a little girl. That's the furthest thing in the in the food chain. It's from a, a man and a girl. So what I'm telling you is 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 do not allow these people to control you make you feel how you need to think whatever that's why i'm doing this podcast because i want you to know you can be whatever the fuck you want to be and nobody can stop you and let me tell you something puff was a um a narcissist jay-z was a narcissist dang was a narcissist spike lee was a narcissist russell said anybody who came from nothing and became something had to have more narcissistic ways than they had to have humble ways. i tell you he wasn't a narcissistic even though he portrayed a narcissistic muhammad ali you know what I'm saying? Muhammad Ali. They, 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 okay, that's okay. Here's a great example. Great example. People in America tried to make Muhammad Ali feel like he was a narcissist because he was like, I'm not fighting against no um, Vietnam, Viet Cong. I'm not fighting them because they didn't do nothing for, to me. And they was like, he's a narcissist. He changed his name from Cassius Clay and named himself Muhammad Ali. They didn't want to respect him as that. We loved him and respect. Well, we loved him after he was in his prime. And we worship him now more after his death. 
But in that motherfucking way, he didn't say, I want to float like a butterfly. I want to sting like a bee. He said, I float like a butterfly and I sting like a bee. And that's why he was great. That's why Floyd Mayweather is great. And a lot of people will make you. And let me tell you something. This world programs us to hate greats because greats do the things that we are afraid to do. And that's what makes them great. So they want us to hate them because they want us to say, oh, he's arrogant. Floyd just does that. Bro, Floyd got to the top of his food chain. And before you judge anybody and judge somebody that's chasing greatness, ask yourself, how far in your food chain have you got? I don't give a fuck if you're a lunch lady. Are you the top lunch lady in your motherfucking county? I'm just saying that. Whatever you're going to do, be the best at it. That's my thing to you. And that's why I did this podcast, because nobody going to tell you what is, what's right and wrong. I'm not even telling you what's right and wrong. I'm telling you make the decision you want to make. Because that's what you got to live with. Meanwhile, most humans are unhappy, son, because they're making decisions the world tell them to make. And they're mad at how it, how, how it played for them because they did everything right. Well, and then got you got, your, you got me right. who's like, man, fuck doing everything right. I'm going to try to do it my way. And they're like, we hate that motherfucking arrogant piece of shit. Yeah, I'm arrogant. But guess what? I became everything I wanted to become. And to me, what, what's more important than that goal? They're becoming everything you dream of becoming. And that's what I want for you. So don't be, you could be a narcissist. You could be humble. You could be a combination of all of them shits. But as long as you are a good person and you're good to people, nobody can take nothing from you. Nobody. Because I'm, I'm better than people than Uncle Michael is. You better than people than who? I'm better to people than you are. Maybe, maybe, maybe so, maybe not, maybe so. Nah, he is. I don't know. <laughs> you don't think so? Material, I mean, shit, you can give him you, you, a hundred dollars. You give him a hundred dollars, I'll give you a nickel, I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit, they're going to like you better because you gave him a hundred dollars, regardless of how you spoke to them. Oh, you Michael, know? I give them, I'm hope for a lot of people. I show them I that you can be great with no attributes that are obvious to American people. Like, it's not like I'm six. I, I had a guy on my show. He's seven foot two, 300 pounds, right? He was on the show. Motherfucker, you, the world, he didn't, I don't know, he didn't stop playing basketball until he was in high school. Who was the dude? It's a, he's a wrestler guy. His name oh. is Chosen One. But my point is, is that his name is Chosen. But my point is that, Uncle Michael, he's seven foot two, 300. Of course, you people look at him and say, man, you should be a wrestler. They, they recruited him to wrestle after basketball because of his size. That's an obvious gift. In school, Raymond. What's the one thing they tell you you're not supposed to do in class? Talk. What do I get paid to do? Talk. Talk. How do I get paid? I talk. So that means school was already against me in my career. All right, so do that you, means okay, school was already against me in my career. Raymond. Huh? Do you care if he gets high school diploma or not? Of course I do. Okay. You know why I care if he get it, though? Because he started it. He should finish it. Okay. But I, I tell him, matter of fact, when he, I tell not him about choice. school, this guy's going to be popular. Hey, man, fuck them teachers. Listen, fuck what them teachers tell you to do because them teachers don't have no power over you. We, you have power over you. You and your family have power over you. So when Little Raymond didn't make his basketball team and he was like my coach, he wanted for basketball and his coach said he wouldn't make it, then I said, well, if you don't make the team, ask the coach, can you be an assistant coach? Because they teach little white kids all that. Like, like what's that? Exposure yeah, he from, the, from Miami Heat. He's in his early 40s been coaching for fucking 15 he years now as a tape because man. he got on the tape guy at 18. They don't teach. They tell our kids go dunk the ball. They tell their kids go learn to what read tape. So I tell the Raymond, yo, talk to your coach. Ask him to work on the team. The coach tells him that's against yo. the rules. And little Raymond was like, Dad, coach said he was against the rules. How would you respond to if you was his father at that moment? He he didn't make the team, and he asked the coach, "Can I at least help?" And the coach says, "No." What's your response be? My response would be find something else to do. Find something that you you're better. You know, I, I of course we need to make the team. I told him about Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you but know? that's not what I did. But I mean, you know, I just hey, he man. He told me look at his car. I yeah. said, look at your coach's car. <laughs> what kind of car are you driving? See, I'm different. Now let me in finish, sense. Uncle Michael. You, you you're judging without hearing oh, okay, why. Go ahead, okay. go ahead. I said, look at his car. He said, why? I said, what kind of car you drive? He said, I think he drives a Nissan. I said, do you want to drive a Nissan? He says, no. I said, well, we don't give a fuck what he thinks then. And not only do we not give a fuck what he thinks, Raymond, hey, I'm going to take it further. I'm going to take it further. The reason why he drives a Nissan, it's not disrespect to him. It's because he only follows the rules. And the reality is, is that in order to be great, in order to be a, a, a disruptor, in order to be a, a game changer, in order to be anything you want to be, you're going to have to piss a couple people off on the way there. And what I'm telling you is, is that 
You can't be afraid of that. So when I seen the coach, I was like, what kind of car you drive? You drive a Nissan. Do we worry about what niggas that drive Nissans got to say, Raymond? That's, and why this no. is that's what's, wrong, that's what's wrong with this world, Ray. I had to Tell push me. back a little bit. You know, Go saying? ahead. That's the whole point of this because conversation. I don't think that uh, it, it doesn't make... Ray, I probably took the damn bus up until I was 50. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, and I would never let somebody look at me and say, you know what, nigga? You got a bus pass. I think about that JG song. How are we going to get around with your bus pass? It don't make me Who no sang different. You that song? Uh, you know, can I get a whoop whoop for all the niggas around? Oh, it's about JG. Oh, but the, can the girl, I get a... the girl, the girl, yeah, the girl yeah. says, yeah. how are we going to drive with our bus pass? I told her, this is how you do it. You you you, you put the bus pass in. Was you go in the back, you, you, and then you hand her the bus pass, <laughs> and she you, come George. in. Just love George to be laughing so I much. Mean, she, you know, she, Listen, she, Raymond, I mean, you know, Raymond, Raymond, really, Raymond, Raymond, what the fuck? Let me tell you something. This world is going to tell you that love conquers all. And I'm here to, I'm here to tell you that it does. It does conquer all. But... You still got to figure out your place in the world because it can conquer all, but it can leave you broken love. I really and what I'm telling love. you is that I don't want to be broken love. I'd rather okay. be rich as fuck. I'd rather be broken love. I mean, I, I, I'd rather be broken love. We, I, and, I'm looking at life this way. Really. Oh, can I teach my son something? Okay, go ahead. Uncle Michael said he'd rather be what? Broken love. And what is he? Broken love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I said I'd rather be rich. And, and what am I? Rich. And you know why, son? Because we both set our goals. We both told the world what we wanted, and it gave it to us. Maybe That's why romantic. you got to be careful when you say, I don't really want nothing but. Nah, you better want it. There's a song by uh, the Intruders, and it goes like, you know, it's called Together. And one of the lines is, we can live in poverty and have a sense to our name, but we so I just believe, man. I, that's why, Ray, we're going to do this, this topic about love one of these days. Because I, I believe there's no love. There's no such thing as love no more. I love you. You love me, yeah, you do, you love me. But I think it's more, I think it's more a contract. I don't think it's love. I don't think love is, I mean, you know, it ain't like, you know, love. I mean, you ever seen... What? What do you mean? Hold on, hold on. I think, I, I, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Love, love, okay, everybody okay. is lost. I, I love, okay, Explain I that love, what I mean. I love old movies. And you ever seen The West Side Story? And I love that movie because it was a love movie. And I love the way they met. And I loved, man, West Side is one of my favorite movies. I believe, I, it ain't got to do with how much money you got in your fucking pocket. It's got to do, I love you, I care for you, I want you, I, I need you. I'm, you know, it's like, I'm about love, man. And I think now, I am too. if I have money, more people going to love me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to get love if I have money. You know what I'm saying? But what if I don't have money? I don't have no money. I'm broke. You know, I got a couple <laughs> dollars, but you know, here and there. But Plus the 115 I just sent you. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he just, he just sent me a dollar fifteen because I told him. He I, said he uh, needed it. I, what I said? I said, said. I said. I said, how was life going? He said nothing. I'm just trying to get a dollar fifteen cents. <laughs> I said, trying to make a dollar out of fifteen cents. And you sent him a dollar fifteen cents. Man, man I'll take give me five, man. I'll I'll give me five, man. I love you I'll so much. But let me tell you, I love you. Can I tell you what? No, but it wasn't a thought. Oh, you asked for it. You asked for that. I didn't ask him. You said I'm trying to make a dollar fifteen cents. He gave it to you. I'm trying to make. $20 million in the next 24 months. Next See year. how the difference is? Now, that means, now here's the thing, Raymond. <laughs> I want you, let me teach you a lesson, son. Because we about to rap. We're going to rap. This lesson I want to teach you. I want to teach you a lesson is that everybody in the world has the same 24 hours a day. That's we true. all have the same 24 hours a day. How do you use it determines how far you go. Some people use that 24 hours to go try to find and make enough money, try to make enough money to feed their family. Some people use that time to go find enough money to buy a new house. The guy that makes some money to feed his family is going to feed his family, and the guy that makes some money to buy a new house is going to buy a new house. But if you got nothing to buy a new house, you definitely got no money to feed your family. So my thing is if you're going to spend your time doing anything, spend your time doing something big. Spend your time finding a way to maximize your time. The one thing that I didn't learn, that I know now, that I learned in the last 12 months that I didn't know, is how valuable my time is. See, Uncle Michael thing is all about money. Money ain't shit. Anybody can give you money. How, how do you invest your time tells you everything. If you spend time in the gym, you're going to look good. If you spend time in the gym, you spend time reading, and you spend time going out learning and networking and meeting people, you're going to do better. You just got to spend time chasing big goals. And... Uncle Michael and me are the same person. We both love our family. Uncle Michael is just okay with his family riding the bus, and I don't want my family on the bus. I remember riding the bus saying, this can't be It'll my life. You. Huh? It'll humble you. 
ride the bus. And, 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 and by the way, see, it'll humble you. What makes you, what narcissist you? What makes you that? You know what? Ray, Riding a car. Ray, sometimes, like, like when I'm, when I'm around you, sometimes I feel like, what the fuck? This is not me. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you know, you have, you, like, okay, when you start buying your cars, I remember you, you, you'd be like, yeah, I just bought this car. And I'm like, you know, how much you pay for it? You tell me, I'm like, in my head, I'm this motherfucker's out of his mind. Because, you know, you, you want these cars, man. But it, to me, it's just material shit to me. You no, it's not, it, but, but it's not about the material shit. It's about the mentality to get what you want. But people's going to respect you because you drive that no, car. No, no, people, Uncle Michael, people don't, people don't, I just came back from Vegas. When I walk in rooms, people respect me, period, because of how I carry myself. People, I'm just being honest with you. You have to tell yourself you're great before the world tells you you're great. I agree with that. Yeah, but then why the fuck can't he tell himself he's great now then? Yeah, I'm just saying is you got to be some hum humble in the process. No, you why I got to be humble? Great. You don't have you know? to be humble. Nobody great is humble. They're humble, they're humble to under God. That's different. Right. Michael Jordan knows God gave him those gifts. But how do you honor the gift God gave you? You honor it by focusing on being the best at it. Using it. Exactly. So what I'm telling you is, is, is you I don't want you to be humble and I don't I don't care if you want to be a narcissist, but I want you to be confident in yourself because nobody's going to pick you off the ground, pick you up off the ground. But you remember that day we, we took me to see Spike Lee. Yeah. And I remember, you know, Spike Lee was like, I put Spike Lee in my top 10 hero list up until that day he took me to see Spike Lee. And I was just about to say that. I, I, I mean, I, man, he just changed my whole mind about him, my whole opinion about him, just the way he was talking to my other folks. You know what I'm saying? And I was to Ray. Ray said, man, we're going to see Spike Lee. He's going to do, oh, man, I want to meet him. I want to tell him he's great and all that. And then when I met him, He's, I mean, I said to myself, this he was, he was a narcissistic motherfucker. Was he a narcissist? Wait, yes. what did he do? Well, it, it's just the way he it, was speaking it, it, to Raymond, people. It doesn't matter what he did. I just it, felt like, man, when you in that, when people look up to you, you, you know, they be, just, they be humble. Thank you. Look, it, some dumb dude say, Spike, uh, can I give you my script? Man, what the fuck? I said to myself, my God, can you just turn him down? And right now, I can't take any script. I mean, I just felt like because because you know why he said that? It was at his premiere. Imagine you're at your premiere, Aaron, from a movie you've been working on, and then people are there to see your movie, and you do the first Q&A, and the first question someone asks you is, how can I get you a script? Man, come on, man. I'm, I'm, here, to my, I'm here to push my movie. I will, I will at least get to do this some This is my advice. moment, bro. Like, oh, okay. And if you're going to ask me that, ask me that. Don't ask me that in front of this crowd of people, so now everybody thinks it's a chance to okay. get on. Right. I, I, this guy, this guy, remember the hotel I used to work in? It was his brother. He worked from Norfolk Southern, right? And he's come there, you know, and I was like, damn, this Dolph of Sutton's a good job. I want that good job. And I swear to God, I asked me, yo, bro, how you get with North Folk Sutton? Man, you would have thought I asked the school his mama. I mean, I, I felt like if I, if I was in that situation. What did he say? Man, I don't know. I, I mean, it's like he was real. He took it aback on the fact that I asked him, how you get in North Folk Sutton? Now, I'm saying, damn. That bothered you? Huh? That bothers you? Yes. Okay, now watch. Anybody come to me, yo, I, can I work for you? Can you show me how to get a FEMA? I'm going to show you how to be in FEMA. Listen, Raymond, let me tell you something. I was walking through the mall yesterday. I saw this black girl. Swear to God, this, this black girl. Mind you, wasn't a pretty black girl. wasn't an ugly black girl. Just a regular black girl. I'm walking, and she was coming in my path, but I was trying to make a left to go into a store. So I kind of looked at her to see if she's going to go this way or if she's going to cross in front of me. She, she crossed in front of me and then looks at me and be like, nigga, why are you always looking at me in my face, nigga? Staring at me, nigga, you don't know me. And I remember just thinking, like, damn, you're going to have a hard life. Because all I was trying to do was be respectful and not bump into you. Now what my, more was I, that? Huh? What more was it? Was, it was at, um, at uh, Crystal Shops in, in Vegas yesterday. Oh, okay. But my point is this. Mom, what'd you do? No, mom wasn't even there. Mom wasn't even there. She went, I was walking by myself. But my point is this, is that how people receive you is based on, it's more about them than it is yeah. about you. Yeah, I guess. And, and, and when you, there are people who have met, how many people you think met Spike Lee and felt exactly how Uncle Michael felt? He's arrogant as fuck. But guess what? Does that stop Spike Lee from being great? I just changed my opinion. Yes or no? Does it stop him no. from being great? No. That's my point. Your opinion of me has nothing to do with me. 
It has everything to do with you. How you see me has everything to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. Because remember, you can walk in the room and say hello to everybody, shake everybody's hand, and ask anybody do they want something to drink. And they still going to be like, that nigga think he arrogant as fuck. Like, I can get my own drink, nigga. I don't, so you can't make people happy. So my point is, is do what makes you happy and do that shit to the best of your ability and be okay with the results. And this is the 3G's podcast. Later. And that's how I want to end the show because I want you to understand talk about what greatness games. is. Next week is game. We this about talking about homosexuality. I had a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll save that for two weeks from now. <laughs> hey, Eric, <laughs> no, 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 no. like, I was like, what?